Hey guys, sorry about being late. Oh, those days, sometimes they're just like, they get away from you. Let's see. Okay, so let me get myself situated because I was actually getting a bunch of stuff ready to go because today I'm going and working on recording as soon as we're done here. So good morning, good morning. And you guys will probably see how it ties in because when we want to talk about certain things or do certain issues, usually stuff gets in the way of it. So I am sorry I'm late. I'm just going to finish clearing off my desk. I want to just tell you guys I'm super excited. I have been, um, I'm building a whole new package. So I want to put this out there. Most of my Life Mastery students um, watch this show. It's part of how they take their work even deeper. And it's how they learn. Like, right, and this is part of why I do this. This is also in support of my students. And them becoming, hi Cheryl, them becoming more and more a daily practicer of these transitions of uh, perspective and understanding and awareness and how they can begin to you know, integrate the lessons they're learning in the Life Mastery class. So I'm super excited because I want to um, offer my former students or current students of Life Mastery programs to participate in what I'm gonna be going to be calling the Grounded Family Package. So I have this thing that I drew earlier, um, and I'm putting this out there because I want you guys to all who have taken or are taking the Life Mastery, or heck, if you plan on signing up for the Life Mastery, we're just going to be retransitioning everything around to build into this Grounded Family Package. So. A while back, when I first started doing um, work around this, I found service work can easily take over your personal life. And you can get to this place where you're like, oh my God, what do I do today? <laughs> and where does my family actually fit into my daily agenda? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Jesse. So I, I started realizing I actually have to make time to not only be available to my family as just Jesse, as mom, as wife, as, you know, a normal everyday person, but I also had to give time to my greater family and take time away from some of my greater family and start shifting how I consciously interacted with my whole network of who I had in my life. So I realized, and I've been thinking about Good Morning Laura, um, that what is it that's necessary, you know, to get us in that transition space and keep us there? What, and that's recognizing what pulls us out of the transition space. So that's why I made a commitment to myself to stay grounded in my family in my family unit, uh, my former teacher used to say, you've got to tether yourself in and keep those ties strong. And so I made, I drew this and it says, a grounded family is a growing family. And this has been hanging on my little shelf of my desk forever, <laughs> like for the last four years now. And I try to always keep it in mind, you know, when I'm scheduling things, Where's my family time going to work into that? And likewise, where's my Jesse time going to work into that? Where Jesse is allowed to just exist without anything else, right? That's just, she has her time too. And um, that just creating that concept of balance. So I'm building a family package that will have classes, exercises and games that people can play and listen to and do as a family. It'll have meditations. And it's going to be set so that it's not so far down the metaphysical spectrum that it becomes unaccessible to like your whole family, right? Because we all have <laughs> those uncles and, um, and, and grandparents and aunts and cousins that are radically, uh, seemingly op opposite our viewpoint and perspective. So it will really be something to kind of balance and bring the whole family in. Um, so if you want to participate in that and you have, you're an active student with me, um, 
<laughs> you were grounded all the time and now I'm never grounded. Well, Kyle, that's part of the, partially that's because of your awakening process and where you're putting your energy towards being grounded. Um, and that's, that's why each morning when we show up here, even if you just show up for the last 15, 20 minutes of the show or five, 10 minutes some days, uh, and you're just doing that grounding and connecting meditation, at least that, that bit of the day is taken in, uh, in that focus and direction. Okay. So that was my announcement for today. Um, and I wanted to say we don't have anybody, uh, today yet for card pulls. So if you would like a card pull, Go ahead and start requesting. Oh, in response to Jesse's comment. <clears throat> um, so the um, so the card pulls we're going to do, and then somebody requested what we would talk about today as far as our main subject. Laura, you'd like a card? Great. Uh, and so what I'm going to see, I'm curious, I'm going to see if the cards that we pull are, um, as usual, <laughs> pulling into the subject that we're going to be talking about. And I have a feeling it's going to, great, Eric, that's right. I remember you said something yesterday. Sorry for forgetting. I, if I don't write it down, it leaves my brain. I tell you what. And then Laura, one more slot if anybody wants it. So, um, yeah, I had a feeling that this certain deck is the one that totally wants to be talking today. So I wonder if any of you can guess which deck I'm going to choose to work with today. Think about what we did yesterday, what we talked about yesterday. Um, think about some of the work we've been doing, how to relieve ourselves of those um, ideas and concepts and all those things. So Ganesh, that's an interesting guess, Laura, and I'll tell you why after. Uh, anybody else have any guesses while I start to pull, and we still have one slot left. Um, Cheryl, there we go. Okay, so Eric, yeah, I just wanted to give it a check to see if any of the, I don't wanna force my will. <laughs> So here's the deck that I ended up choosing. Oh, you saw the post, Laura. Actually, no, it was. it's not the Ganesh deck, and that's why I was going to say it's interesting that you say that, because I have been seeing elephants a lot. I have elephants around my house. I've added an elephant <laughs> Ganesh to my uh, desk space now that I've gotten, um, stopped doing the fairs, the little fairs that I have to keep always packed up for. So I can kind of open my stuff out and let it breathe. So no, the, I chose actually the Galactic Heritage deck because I think that, yeah, uh, I think that it's going to be uh, more revealing in what I believe we'll be talking about today. Um, and we'll see where today goes. <laughs> I had a lot of thoughts running through my head this morning as I was working and trying to finish up way printed what I wanted printed to take over for recording in a little bit. Ooh, we're excited. My voice is all good and clear. <laughs> okay, let's see. So Eric. The food paste posts are making me hungry too, Eric, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so Eric, <laughs> I haven't seen this card because, you know, I don't tend to go through the deck too terribly much, and I definitely haven't read this one yet, but I totally see how already this one fits into the, latter, the, the larger discussion, I should say. So what you got is card number 32, Zeta Reticuli, Linear Thinking. When beings stop themselves from feeling emotion, especially fear, and resort only logic to negative th through reality, oh, excuse me, and resort to only logic <laughs> to navigate through reality, reality becomes very limited. 
New ideas that don't conform to the formula of linear thinking are rejected without exploration. This card recommends that you look at your patterns of limited thinking and see how they restrict the experiences you have in life. Let yourself begin to think outside of the box and explore new ideas that previously seemed impossible. The Zetas had to do this in order to heal the, their species, and most likely, so will humans. Why not start now? Uh, the commentary on this card, because I, I love what she has written. She really, truly has a great, um, and her stuff's, you can just feel it, it's all channeled. <laughs> exactly, Jesse. If you've pulled this card and are not familiar with the Zeta species, look at the formation card for 30 also. Let me just look really quickly. Uh, in the ancient days of the Zeta reticuli, their species nearly destroyed themselves due to a highly planetary toxicity and misuse of technology. When they realized that their species was dying, they experienced the most primal of fears, that of no longer continuing as a species. These spe survival factors forced them to look deeply within and make drastic changes. The same is true in our own lives. Often, we don't make changes until we can clearly see that our old ways will only destroy us. By then, we have little chance of change. What part of your life needs to be changed? Begin the process now before it becomes too difficult. So that's the introduction to them. I'll get to that, Jesse. So for here, for the linear thinking, this card refers to a specific aspect of the Zeta, er, the Zeta struggles with in this area. Because the Zetas rejected emotions and intuition, which are more holographic in nature, the only process they had left in which to organize reality was of logic and thought, which are very linear in nature. Remember, the Zeta species originally came from the Vega colonies, and the seeds of this challenge can be seen in the Vega card 26, in which this challenge began. When a person or a society resorts primarily to linear thinking to navigate reality, it creates a very rigid box of perception that creates limitation. This is why the Zetas could not see a way out of the box of the situation they created that nearly destroyed their species. Humans have the same challenge on Earth now, and it's vital that we somehow reconnect with our intuition and emotions in order to navigate away from the same fate that befell the Zetas. If this card came up in your reading, it is challenging you to examine how your own linear thinking keeps you stuck. How can you use your mind and your intuition, heart, to navigate your reality? How can you learn to validate both? Doing so will be a powerful next step in your personal evolution. So, Eric, not only is this for you, but this is for us as a race right now. And if you guys knew how ironic it was that this is twice out of the box, okay, so I'm just going to tell you. So one of the things that have just been we've been playing around with, with me and um, a, a, a group of us that were working together to build these new healing systems and pack, not systems, but kind of packages is we've been talking about having them in boxes and we were trying to think about like what to call it like what to call those and one of my friends was over um and and he and he was just kind of brainstorming product lines and he said maybe you should call it out of the box and um and and I loved that <laughs> and then it was that we kind of like moved on and so I feel like I'm also being reminded of the of that too. Like, remember, this is out of the box thinking, out of the box, like creation, right? Like, pull everything that you've learned in the linear system out of that box and play with it, and open it all up and see what else you can find, what else you can create, what else you can build. So there's that too. That's that's also coming to me. Okay, so that was the first card. Totally on point with what I am 
going to be talking about. And if any of you can guess it using your intuition, what you think I might be talking about or experience that you have had, maybe you saw uh, the post or anything along those lines. All right, Laura. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's just perfect when it flows, right? I love it when it flows. Okay. Yeah, man out of the box. Okay, so this is 37, single-minded focus, Orion, past. Those who were fighting for freedom within the ancient Orion system had to develop intense focus and discipline that could guide them in life and death struggles. For many, this led to a spiritual mastery that is similar to what you, we see today in modern martial arts masters and monks. You have had this experience in your ancient past and still possess this skill of intense focus. But the question is, on what do you habitually put your focus? This card suggests that you should choose to focus your energy wisely. Choose to remove focus from negative self-talk and use your ability instead for spiritual evolution. This card connects with the Orion spiritual forefathers, the Vegans. See, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Those teachings of Vegan mysticism created a foundation in Orion that could be used for positive or negative purposes. We also see how this intense mental focus was played out with another species, seeded from Vegas, the Zetas, which was what we were just looking at. With their emphasis on logic, reason, and mental ability during their most ancient and dark era, as expressed in the cards, which, by the way, that's the second time this pops, so I'm going to say it, um, we have to, what we, I think what we're noticing and what we're starting to try to turn away from as a population is the um, linear focus, right? That's why we've been talking about time. Uh, if you followed me way back when I was doing the Crystal Cocoon, you would have heard um, our discussions about time and understanding linear thinking and linear processing of the experience with which we're in. Um, so recognizing that um, as we, it, they've said this twice, like as we, as those species, as those groups, right, which are our forefathers, all of these, as they came more and more to their end, where their, which led them to the poisoning of their planet, it was by taking away their intuition, by taking away their emotional understanding, their emotional intelligence, their connection with each other, by isolating each other and putting each other in spaces of fear. Fear is the box, right? So by putting themselves in those positions, it leads one only to a toxic environment. The outside can only be a reflection of the inside and relationship with itself, that species relationship with themselves as individuals, as a collective, and where they were at in their understanding and awareness of the whole creation. So just keep that in mind and think about like, when you watch the news or you watch modern TV or you're exposing yourself to the at large uh, entertainment media, how negative focused is it? What kind of language do they use? How do you feel while you're watching it? Is your, does, does your adrenaline rise? Do you feel um, uh, validated, justified, judgment and judgment? And there's a reason that Jerry Springer was the most popular TV show around the world for a really long time. People felt extreme validation and judgment um, uh, with those people. They could sit back in their home and watch these people indulging, <clears throat> see, indulging in this behavior that was just absolutely the bottom of the barrel of what we're capable of as a species in all different ways, whether you're looking at parenting to social relationships. You're interesting. <laughs> yeah. So there's a reason that we're being fed this kind of information and this kind of media. There's also a reason that we're being fed reality TV, showing an alternative reality timeline. Um, so the card pile lineup looks like so far, and we're going to do one more. I just have a tiny bit more to read on that, um, like this. 
linear thinking and single-minded focus. So the Zetas are the forefathers of the Orions. So the last little bit of that card, um, single-minded focus can be a positive or a negative attribute. Remember, we don't have to put value on these things. These are just things. In these dark times of Orion, it was used as a positive attribute for defense or survival and for enduring challenging times. It was also used as a negative attribute in the form of physical war, of psychic warfare. If this card appears in your reading, the message depends on your situation and the surrounding cards. It could be pointing to the past life in Orion where you had this ability. It could also be telling you to develop more mental discipline in this life now or let go of too much single-minded focus that key is keeping you stuck in your life it requires you to go within and look at yourself clearly too much of anything is not a good thing use the skill when the when and where appropriate but remember that the power lies in walking a middle road so you know that's the deal is we got to get more and more balanced and Look, you know, positive and negative is just a polarity being pulled in two different directions. Exactly, Shauna, exactly. Something to that's disruptive, that feels like it's in some way um, making it harder to focus, harder to listen. There is definitely a reason that is happening. And if the feed were to even cut out, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. Um, okay, so the last card. Yeah, is for Cheryl. And I'm just gonna look it up really quickly. And for those of you who are beginning to get a guess about what we're gonna be talking about, <laughs> were there any doubt? Okay, so <clears throat> this is the card. It's card number 56, Healing Crisis and Purging Present Orion. Whenever healing takes place, so does purging. This means that the old toxic energy has to be released. Often we interpret this release as a sign that things are getting worse. They are not. Even on earth now, as we are purging and transforming, it looks like we're getting sicker. But we are actually releasing a lot of old toxic energy. This card asks you to not fear this process, this purging process, because it is an essential part of transformation. In fact, seek it out. It is time to let go of some ancient patterns that you have carried for lifetimes. As they release, know that it is purging and it is a good sign of healing. So we totally have that, that, that response where you know uh, we get something happening to us that feels uncomfortable, that we feel like you know. Um, for me, when I'm healing, I know I'm healing because I get more like pimples around on my body in weird places that there shouldn't be one. Ah, for, for kidney stones, for sure, purging and releasing Cheryl. So recognizing that this is part of in and for us who are here as like those kind of shepherding consciousnesses, those people who are here as the um, ones who've birthed into the system to facilitate and support and shine for this transition of humanity, that means that we are going to experience to a greater degree these issues and these challenges. We birthed into lines where the karmic debris is heavy and intense. So interesting. So we, we're, we're birthing into family lines where we're purging like generations of family karma. And that's another reason that I wanted to start making this grounded families package because it, it, it's, it's, it's all across the family. And if we change one piece of the family, it makes it so challenging for that one piece to stay an integrated part in the whole family, unless the whole family is having these kind of discussions and awareness expansions. And that doesn't mean believing the same thing. That doesn't mean that, you know, your grandparents suddenly have to believe that Zeta Reticuli were our forefathers. I mean, come on, let's get real, <laughs> right? But we do have to have the conversation that this is something that's been going on for generations in our family, grandma. And wouldn't you love to just kind of 
think your way uh, stop thinking your way through everything and maybe maybe we as a family feel some stuff out and learn that it can be fun to feel each other instead of scary that in our most intimate of spaces and this doesn't necessarily also by the way mean just your uh, biological blood family this is your family who is your family anyway so just just uh, see how it's all tying together I love it when the synchronicities do that, don't you? Okay, so sorry, I'll finish this. This card is also referring to the era of Orion history in which polarity conflicts were, being, were beginning to heal. The healing of polarity in Orion actually happened very quickly compared to other civilizations. And thus, they had to go through a lot of rapid detoxification of old belief systems and ways of being. Polarity integration and healing is happening on Earth as well, but more slowly than it did on Orion. And this creates a lot of chaos that is seen in the world around us. It's important to believe that sometimes there's a higher reason for chaos and pain. It can be a sign of profound transformation. When you have this experience of pain and chaos in your life, look closely at what needs to be changed or transformed. It's likely that this aspect of you is crying out for change or even a death of an old way of being. More lessons for me as well. If you move with the flow of this energy despite the chaos around you and stay connected in your inner truth you can navigate through this temporary pain and confusion and emerge on the other side in a more integrated healthy and happy family if this card is in your reading it may refer to a lifetime during this era in orion or it may also be referring to a dynamic change happening or needing to happen in your life right now. Pay attention to the message and trust that chaos, pain, and purging are not always negative things, but can lead to profound healing. So what was asked for me to talk about was uh, the Orion group, <laughs> right? That was, that was the basic request was, um, can we talk about uh, how and why the concept that the energy of Metatron being channeled right now and being used as um, the main guiding force for the voices of so many across an entire spectrum of this awakening consciousness um, population. So there's becoming a divide in the light working population and you're going to start seeing it more and more profoundly uh, you're going to start seeing that there are some times you'll hear somebody uh, and they are talking they're speaking from metatron they're speaking from that consciousness of of metatron or gabriel or michael or Bashar, or some other voice that we have begun to trust and listen to and seek out and uh, feel confidence with, right? So much so that we stop questioning when the messages come through. And this is actually what happened to um, uh, Yahweh, right? We all know, of, we well, if you aren't familiar with Yahweh, um, Yahweh was a consciousness that was from a much higher density who really for, kind of forgot about polarity in general, hadn't, hadn't really lived that way, um, and was much more closely connected to the whole principle of source consciousness, the infinite consciousness, rather than so individuated that it would even exist in an expression of polarity. And Yahweh came in and wanted to, what, what Yahweh believed originally was that if these humans are struggling, <laughs> right, they've already gone through one aspect of their harvest and had nobody ready to transition into forward into fourth density. And now we've got only two more harvest cycles left. And what if they're not ready? 
And so they were already partially through, almost all the way through where we were, um, the second harvest cycle. And still not having any of us really ready to move forward. Polarity with emotion um, is, it's, it's, it's a really tricky, tricky, tricky thing. And our population here is, is technically, it's kind of like the great big, uh, I don't want to say orphanage, but I'd rather say dormitory, where all sorts of species have brought their, their genetics, their uh, knowledge. Um, yes, you should be. You should, well, well, I'll get to that. So they brought all of this, their, their information. So that means that we also have the ones that left, right? So at the Orion system right now, Orion has transitioned and is working in a different way. And it still has, you know, planetary populations and populations that are still working on and learning in varying degrees as always. But they've, as a general population, moved forward. There are always going to be those because it's a spectrum who don't, who or who move forward in negative density. And so they continue in a separate path that is that that feeds on fear because fear is an intense creating. It makes the heart beat faster, makes a higher energy rate. Uh, just like you wanna know how to rev up an engine, you wanna know how to rev up a heart, especially if you get your energy from those hearts instead of from the infinite consciousness, instead of from source. So there's going to always be those that are on that opposite polarity in order to be the root cause of the lessons that teach one to move out of polarity and into balance. So we can't, they're not villainous, they're not bad, they're not evil. We have to kind of start to release that idea because that creates fear. And fear is the way that we lose our focus, right? That's the way that we don't go with intention because we're afraid. We're just trying to survive. We don't have our whole present self with us. We have that part of ourselves like, if I die, if I die, if I die, right? It's separated away. So we're no longer wholly present. That's why we have to remove fear, not because it's bad. It's, it is a driving force to be able to see and spot where do I still have weaknesses, where I break my own boat, right? Or where, I, where do I still have rocks in my flow of my river that may crush my bow? And if it does crush my bow, that doesn't mean my boat is destroyed. Perhaps I actually need a different kind of boat for this part of the river. So I need to pull my boat out and remodify it, check in with where it's at, do some scoping around. That doesn't mean I need to suddenly be afraid of my river. It means I need to be more focused and intentional in this part because the river has changed. And if you are a river captain, we have to, we are river pilots. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but like, let's say you're getting some shipment from China to America. There's one captain who captains the, in the ocean, right? He's the one who knows how to handle the big waves, be able to read further off in the horizon, less time to respond, bigger area of storms, right? So we have those things. And then we have a different captain who pilots the ship over the bar. The bar is that the sand, the buildup of the silt that the river has pushed into that meeting space between the river and the, and the ocean. And the bar changes all the time. So bar pilots have to be training all the time and be re rechecked, always knowing because the landscape under that bar, under the water is totally hidden. You can't see it. You have to sound it out. You have to feel it out. Be checking, be monitoring, be measuring. So some of us are going to be bar captains. Some of us are sea captains. And then in the river, we only have captains that pilot parts of the river. Different parts. They know their stretch. It's a big stretch, but they know it. And they also have to retest because the river is always changing and shifting and in motion. So just recognize these things because this is true in our human cult, in humanity as well. And we have all of this other, these beings, all of these other beings, we've got their DNA all laced in through all of us. We're a hodgepodge, trust me. 
There are very few, or few purebreds left. So, Yahweh. Yahweh watched all this struggle, and he was seeing how there's not enough people. Tugboat captain? Yeah, then we got our tugs, right? Can't forget the tugs, because they're the powerhouse. So, we have these, we have the genetics that lead us back into, um, uh, where was I? Well, that come back into the family, right? So when we are healing and growing and developing and we're reaching out and we're talking to these different guides and talking to these different beings who are captaining or piloting us through our remembrance of who we are as energetic beings outside of ourselves, if we aren't using discernment, if we aren't checking in with what they are, if we aren't feeling the energy and we're just receiving the information, intuition without emotional intelligence and energetic awareness is dangerous actually and it's dangerous in the sense that you if your goal is to find balance that and you're not checking where your information is coming from it's going to keep you swinging and why because there are beings out there that actually need us like little mini sons they need the source energy from us because they can't access it themselves. They can't because they've revoked their agreement to be in connection with source. That's it. They believe themselves to be source only and not a part of a unity which create is created of source, right? It's just two totally different concepts. The root of polarity, the separation, right? So this is how this whole system works. So the Orion group, they're the ones who are being accused of essentially hijacking the signal of Metatron coming into our guidance. I learned early on when I'm streaming guidance information to always be checking it. I have people I trust who I check in with and I'm like, hey, Give me a yes or no about something and I'm going to think about it, right? And, and I'm not telling them what it is. So they're just giving me yeses or noes. And if they're yeses and noes, and I actually have two or three people that I really trust now um, uh, and that are, pr that are showing me uh, over and over how we're, we're on the same feed, we're getting that same feed stream. Uh, and they also are confirming suspicions or feelings or senses that I'm getting. So I'm, I'm learning the feeling of the energy and understanding when things come through that feed and they don't feel like that, that core, they feel a little peripheral. They make me feel uncomfortable. They make me feel a little bit anxious. They make me feel a little bit nervous. They make me fear the future. They make me fear my life ending or changing or the lives ending or changing of others. They make me focus on things outside of my goal, my trajectory, my point. Those are where I have to be ex exceptionally aware of what I'm pulling and what I'm streaming, what information is coming through. Because there are going to be things, people, <laughs> humans have all kinds of, I, we can laugh about it and call them mind control rays, but the reality is there's, there's so many whistleblowers out there and like undebunkable whistleblowers. So you don't have to take my word for it. You just have to step into that world of discovery that are already talking about the various effects where they will have beta waves being transmitted through the cell phone towers, all kinds of stuff. And you can think it's conspiracy theory. I doubt you'd be here if that's where you were still at in your linear level of thinking. We've been experimenting on how to create unrest, how to create peace, how to sue the comp a population. We've been playing with it and how to destroy and blow up a population like this has been going on for a long time and there are countries that are whistleblowing on it all over the place but where is that drive coming from for them to do those sorts of behaviors in the first place to use those sorts of tools and experiences technology and consciousnesses right there's a route for that too 
Well, those that didn't want in the Orion system to continue forward in the growth and development into unity and release the concept that I myself am a God, right? In whatever way you want to put that, they left. Where did they go? They came here <laughs> and places like here. And so they're still trying to hold on to and maintain that level of control. And that's why in various government bodies and various, you know, um, law enforcement branches and uh, business and finance, why there's this divide showing up of those who are like, no, it has to be this way, be afraid. And those that are like, we actually can work outside of that box. I know law enforcement officers that have blown my mind of what I thought the culture was by having conversations with them about it. And if we don't have the conversations, if we don't interact with these energies, we won't have the feel and we can't get into and understand these different points and concepts and therefore can't learn to steer and navigate our river more clearly. If a pilot is afraid as it's going down the river of what might be under the surface because they haven't done the work and the research and the, and the, and the feeling and the exploration and the testing, then they can't trust the information that's coming through in the first place. They can't actually use it to make good change if it were a positive line of connection in the first place. So that's how they serve us. We don't have to be afraid of them corrupting a line of connection or coming through and stealing Metatron's feed. We just have to listen more carefully to Metatron as we stream it. And we have to build our ability to stream it ourselves so we're not dependent upon the filters of others to stream for us. We have to learn how to do that for ourselves. We have to learn how to discern for ourselves. And the only way to do that is through experience. So not to plug myself, but that's why I created classes the way I do. I don't do this for you. I teach you how to do it. And that's why I show up here every week. So don't live in fear about the Orion group. They're not something to be afraid of. They're a rock to be aware of, to know how to steer your boat more, more, more gracefully. And when you do break something on your boat, it's not because you're broken. It's time to shift either your boat, replace something, repair something, readdress, reassess, relearn. Hey, if you've ever been in a plane, you know that the air is just another flow, right? There's pit holes, <laughs> there's vortexes, there's wind, there's pressure gaps, there's all sorts of things in the airstream. So you gotta learn how to navigate there too. We can turn it, we can say that the mirror is bad. I don't like that mirror. It's dirty, it's ugly, it's bad. We can say that. And we can turn away and look for some other better mirror or we can address the mirror that's there. And this is part of that continuing conversation that we were having about me releasing that woman. Right now, I haven't told her I don't want to talk to her. I don't want her following me on social media. And I have that right because that's actually my business world. That's my my service work. That's my experiential work. And I have to learn how to how to be in it. And sometimes I'm ready to navigate a totally different stream. And I'm like, oh, I know that stream. So I now know how to bypass it. And I'm going to have opportunities to see those bypass points and navigate my stream into a better flow. Maybe I don't wanna be still kayaking in a tiny little boat. As you said, I need a bigger boat. I have a lot more people on it. So I wanna go into bigger rivers. I don't need to get distracted on those side rivers anymore. There are some that I'll still travel down and maybe I'll take a little piloting boat out for it. <laughs> we could go all over the place with this. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's so many different ways and I can't tell you what the right way for you is. I can just show you how I navigate, how I pilot my boat, my boats, <laughs> and you can figure it out for yourself. So how about today? And we've done this one before, sort of, but I'm sure it'll be a different take on it. Today we do our meditation about just investigating and exploring 
who we feel like is contacting us and really open it up. Exactly. Thank you, Shauna. I did really explore the crap out of that river. I just didn't suffer through the exploration. As soon as that part started to come, I'm like, oh yeah, see, that's a, that's a rock and I don't actually have to hit it to know it's there. Um, so that's a great, thank you. Thank you, Shauna. Because <laughs> I do really feel like I'm moving in the right direction with that one. All right, so let's go ahead and get comfortable. Check your posture. Are you going to lay down? Are you going to sit up? How are you going to show up for this moment, this meditation? Get yourself comfortable. Take a sip if you need to. I didn't even refill my coffee, so I, I don't have any smiling coffee, <laughs> which is my favorite time. Thank you, Shauna. I feel really good about it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and... Oh, I... I'm going to use the stone that I don't normally use with you guys. I feel like this is the perfect stone. So this is a piece of lava with some quartz growing in it. It's this little like nugget of quartz. It's even got a little shit on it. <laughs> I love having the bird poo there. <laughs> so this is change, chaos. We fear lava, right? We're like, oh, I live in the Pacific Northwest. So I've got Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier. And um, I had some friends call me up one day who had just watched one of those movies where like it was all these volcanoes going off and their friends all died. They were like, oh my God, you live by all these volcanoes. <laughs> and I just giggled because... I don't actually fear lava, but we're going to use this because this is that representation of total change, total new, such new frequency, new vibration, new energy. Um, if you have, yeah, perfect. You've got your celestite. Perfect, Shauna. Uh, if you have any stones near you that you want to hold on to and use, we're going to just see and feel and sense out and, and, and use the frequencies that feel uh, the most supportive to us of anchoring us here in the now, in the present, but that also help us understand and interpret and feel out energetically these different experiences and different things, uh, different energies, okay? Oh, I'm already starting to get a little gold in each color, so I know stuff's coming in. All right, so let's go ahead and begin our circular breathing, right? That, oh, that in out breathing in as you get to the bottom and out coming fully present as you breathe in feeling the air and smelling it and out releasing Breathing in this present time and releasing. Feeling how already your roots are tingling and reaching, just giving it a little more intention and energy. Send those roots wider and deeper, feeling yourself anchoring not just to your space, but the space you hold for those that follow and interact and seek your guidance. For your flow. And in this grounded state, let's go ahead and begin to visualize the river that flows, allowing our tree to trans transmute and transition into our boat. So just take a look. What kind of boat did you build?
What kind of river are you about to float it on? Let's just feel where we're at now in our lives. What our day, what kind of river our day would shape. Just feel it out. Have you made your bow thick and strong? Is your boat flexible and small? Have you found some iron to guard those sides? <laughs> that was me last night. <laughs> Old iron side. Have you put some cannon holes in it? Is your boat armed? Torpedo launchers? <laughs> Is it a submersible boat? Are you looking to go into the depths? What kind of boat are you building? Get to know it, because this tells you a lot about how the speed feels, how the stream feels where you're at with your approach, what kind of waters you're seeking, what kind of captain are you becoming right now in your life? Get your charts out. Think about the kinds of waters you've navigated in the past, the ones that felt more effortless to you. Pull those ones out. Pull out the ones that were challenging, that you were afraid and you're like, oh, I'm never going in that kind of water again. Pull those ones out. Look at them. Replay the experiences that made you define those journeys as treacherous or as joyous, challenging, growing. So fast, they flew right by. What made you define these experiences? As you think about these other charts, has your boat shifted or changed? And what's the climate inside your boat? How does it feel, your crew on board? As you play through and flip through these different charts, understandings, awarenesses, approaches, beliefs that you've had, and your boat, getting to know your waters and your boat, notice how effortlessly and gracefully you can replay these things without being attached to the progression. They're not coming to you linearly, releasing yourself from that this then that way of thinking, just shuffling through, allowing that which your attention goes to guide you rather than trying to stay in a progression. Which one of those are you struggling with or allowing? Let's use some of the advice that we got earlier about linear thinking. 
as we heal this aspect in ourselves, we heal it in others. So let's allow those which need the purging the most to come to the surface effortlessly and gracefully and show us. Let's see what it is we're ready to purge right now because you never know that could be your next crystal, your nugget. So allow yourself to look at, don't be afraid of, just look at and experience. We experience this time and this space with the flushing, clearing, cleansing waters flowing as it purges the toxicity out. That region around the water and the river that cleanses the water and makes it so the river is healthy over its flow is called the riparian zone. Allow your riparian zone to effortlessly and gracefully cleanse and release all these emotions and thoughts that you're purging. As you release them, you have to witness them. You've got to know what you're letting go of to know what your stock still is. <laughs> and then release. Let it float away. When it's not all the way witnessed, that's when it stays on board, like a still away. And we never find a still away by going one room to the next in an organized search. They know where we're going, where our attention will be next. So we have to allow the flow to take us to where the next purging is. Crises are the big red flag, the breaking of the bow that forces us to come up out of the river, out of the unconscious flow and take our present awareness in. So allow that to, where are you pulling your boat out? Where are you portaging? Because you're like, no, mm -mm, that, that's unnavigable. I learned from the last time I broke my boat. That's good. Maybe I explored it a few times because I'm stubborn. <laughs> that's good. Let's allow that single-minded focus <laughs> that gets us stuck on an issue. So all the kind, the only kind of river we pull is one treacherous stretch after another. <laughs> Just allow. Explore your rivers today. Observe yourself as you're flowing through your life. Take a moment at the stoplight when you know it just turned red, to close your eyes and imagine, how's my river flowing right now? What kind of boat am I on? Is it armored? <laughs> Is it guarded? Is it wide open? <laughs> Is it just a little tiny raft? Do I need to seriously find an island? Just take that time today and become observant and aware. And tomorrow I want to hear about some of your guys' boats. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. I love you. And see you tomorrow. <laughs>